Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. So I bring you back this way. Work tool needs to be unloaded. Okay, we'll go and do that. That's got to be a priority now, is keeping this one running right here. So we go like that, and we go to stop driver. And then I will go racing down through here. We could probably get rid of all of these waypoints now, couldn't we? So let's go there and get rid of those so that we don't have to be looking at them all the time. We've got the start and finish of them. I'll leave the start and finish bits. The rest we can safely get rid of. And we go bouncing across that bit right there. And then I will go round the back. Round here. So there's another 90,000... Now, 89,794. That's how fast this stuff rots in the trailer with the fresh grass with the seasons. Because that would have been... Surely that was 90,000 when it started. I didn't actually check it. Maybe that's just where Courseplay decided to stop it. Uh, right now, we've got 120,000 litres of hay. And we've got nearly half a million litres of grass. We've put in over half a million now. Now we have. Now we have put in over half a million litres of grass in there, which is quite an insane quantity of grass in total. There's a huge amount of stuff gone in there. I'm, I'm liking this one, though. I am liking this. It means that we're able to just keep this stuff going and keep using it and keep doing a, a really grand job with it. Um, we're able to... Whoa. Okay, I really do need to slow down going across that corner right there. Um, we're able to, with that um, machine right there, with, with the hay dryer, we're able to just keep pouring in the hay with very little work, actually. Uh, if we were doing bales, we'd have to find somewhere to store them. And I would have a choice between... I Right, I want to go there. Next closest waypoint. So if I just do... Yeah, there we go. Right, perfect. Um... If I was doing bales, I'd have to have sheds in which to store the bales in, and ultimately that is a lot of work. Yeah, it's fine storing the bales in the shed. It's, it's no problem, and we're going to be putting straw bales in the shed, but it is still a huge amount of work to actually go and do it, right? That there is a lot, to, there is a lot involved with doing all of that. And it's the same with the straw. I'm wondering if we should have loose straw. The problem with loose straw is getting it into the cows, because I don't think you can... I mean, you can use it with the feeders, but I don't know how you put loose straw in... Because you can't put the loose straw in, in the blower thing, can you? I don't think you can. Can you? Let's have a look a minute. Animals, right here. That one there. Huh. Oh, that's... No, that's a forage mixer. I'm looking at the wrong one. Right. You, right there, this machine takes straw bales and uses them to cover the ground of a pen with straw. So does that one. So does that one. All right, so these are both exactly the same. And then you got that one there. This machine takes straw bales. Now, it says straw on there. It says one bale. So you can't put loose straw in that one. So are you able to put loose straw into one of the mixed feeders and put that through and have it go as um, straw going into the pen? I mean, that one there is probably the one I'm going to use. There's a 50,000 litre capacity on it. There is a bigger one as well. But 50,000 is definitely a good start. It's the, the, um, the one that's... Well, actually, no, we're not going to use the mixed feeder. Look. If, if we can use the mixed feeder to put straw in for the cattle, then yes, that's what we will do. But the other option is... Right, sorry, I was interrupted there. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, the, the straw. If we can put loose straw in using a mixed feeder, then obviously we'll use a mixed feeder for that. But for the rest of it, we're not going to be using mixed feeder. We'll just be using a trailer. Because we're going to be using this one over here. That one right there, the cow feed mixer. That's the one that I want to use. And so that's going to, we'll put everything in loose in the front. You can put bales in there if you want to. So you, you can use bales for it. That's absolutely fine. There's a fermenting silo there as well that you can use if you want to. Uh, we've got a seed maker and the hay dryer is the one that we're using. So that one has been modified um, from the original one. So 
just keep that in mind when you want to do things. And now, this bit right here. We've got nice, clean rows on most of this. It's going to come up to here. This is the bit that I'm curious about. That's going to come around there. We've done that line over there. So it's going to go round here. How many times is it going to rake that same little bit? A lot, by the look of it. It's going to rake it a lot. Let's just leave it at that, that it's going to rake it a lot. It's going to come over to there, and it's going to head down that bit there. So it's leaving, like, little tiny bits behind as it goes through and it does this. And we know that it is coming through and it is raking it up all right, but at the same time, it is also causing some slight problems in places, by the look of it. I don't think it's the end of the world, though, is it? Right. That's okay there, and then this side over here, it's going to go to the bottom of that hill. It's going to take a very short run there, and this is the bit that we've got to do some work with, because this was a complete pig's ear of a job when we came through the combine last time. So we've definitely got to do a bit of work here next time in order to tidy all of this up. Now, this this is the bit here that it's it's making a bit of a mess on. See, it's, it's like dragging out the sides because of doing every other row. Genuinely seems to be struggling with that. And if we've left bales in the way, if we're doing every other line with a baler, thinking I shouldn't have done... Every other line was a mistake, wasn't it? But I don't think I can remake the course to do every line. I think once the course is done, that's it. Once you've generated, that's it. You, you, you don't get a do-over. Not if you've already started using the course. So we're just going to have to live with this one. And just remember next time not to do it like this. We'll do it slightly differently. And that comes up round there. And this, this is the last time on here. On the next pass, it's going to be out over here on this line right here. There, that one there. So you're going to go, yeah. Well, for the most part, it's it sort of seems like it's done okay up through here. It's still a little bit weird in places. But, yeah, it, it's, it's done what we needed it to do. Now it's going flying up through there. And it's putting that two rows some of it is two rows into one and some of it is just straightening out single rows but it is definitely tidying it up and it's tidying out the edges not really sure that it's worth doing although it does mean that we can have um not the height we, we, we can have the course play doing the bailing so yeah essentially we got the the hired help doing the bailing rather than uh, having to do it all manually and that's the whole idea of this is we want the hired help to be able to do the bailing so you're going. You're doing what you need to do. And, oh, combine. That's the bit that I want to do next. Combine up here. I've got the combine hooked up onto this one. So we're going to spin out round, take this back down to the yard. We'll, I'm not going to actually clean off the combine because if you're in the middle of the harvest, I've never known anyone to actually clean off a combine in the middle of the harvest. Um... There's usually too many other jobs that you need to do right in the middle of the harvest, so they don't tend to worry about it. So I've no doubt that some people do. I've known, you know, combines being cleaned off at the end of the harvest. Absolutely, definitely. But in the middle of the harvest, I've never known anyone that has, um, in the middle, of, even if they've got like a day or two of downtime, never known them to clean off their combine. A day or two of downtime usually results in using said downtime to do some... Uh, maintenance work to go through and do like you know if you combine say you've usually got a daily service that you need to follow on them and then they've also got additional service that they need to have done on them as well um, every week you've got additional service or every like three or four days you've got additional um, grease nipples that need to be uh, attended to and you've got other bits that need to be done and then every two, three weeks, like, so once a year, you do that after the harvest is finished. Um, some people do it right before the harvest. Some people do it just after the harvest. Some people will do both. Just double check that it's all done. Um, but, like, halfway through the harvest, there's usually a much bigger service that you need to go through and do. It is on an hour count, but a lot of people will just take a little gap in the middle of the harvest. It's very often there is... A slight gap in between the winter and spring crops um, being ripe. And 
not always. I'm not saying that's always the case, but there is in this country that's very often uh, up to a week. Not um, so very often you, you're sort of chasing your tail, trying to get everything done in time. Um, but it's, it's not unusual for there to be a couple of days where you're just waiting for the next lot to ripen in between the winter and the spring crops. Um, not always, though. I'm absolutely saying not always. I'm just saying in my experience, because if I say always, then everybody's going to come up and say, well, actually, no, we never have that. Actually, we, I've never known that in all the history of farming, and I've been farming for 42 years. So, no, I'm not saying that it's, it's definite. It, it definitely happens. I'm just saying that in my experience, there is often a gap in the middle. And you use that to do, like, a, a major service on a combine. You've got to go over and you've got to find uh, grease points that you didn't even know existed. Um, and then there's a few other bits and pieces to do as well. Uh, very often, you may change oil and fuel filters as well. Um, and a, a couple of other bits on top of that. And that's right in the middle of the harvest, actually going and changing the oil and the fuel filters, which may seem a little bit odd. Some people might not do that at all in the middle of the harvest. It does depend on the hours you do. Like, if you are doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours, then, yeah, there's a very good chance you're going to be doing something like that. If you're not doing quite so many hundreds of hours, then maybe not. Okay, I'm going to go to this one. Where am I going to put this header? We're keeping this combine. This combine is one that we are keeping. I don't think we're leasing it don't think this one's on lease. So because we're keeping the combine, I'm hoping I can bring the header in through here and I can leave it in this shed. Okay, I didn't want to do that. That was a, a, a little bit of a mistake. I'll bring that to there like that. And now I want to try and back that one up. It's very, very difficult to back these header trailers. I really don't like backing these because of the, the way the wheels turn on the back. It's extremely difficult to turn them. But that one's actually all right. So we'll leave that one right there. I'm going to leave the combine where it is as well. We're not going to worry about picking up the header just yet. And you'll stay in there. You are reach trigger end point. We're done. We're done on this field as well. Okay, stop driver. Clear current course. Look at that one. 58,000 litres on there. I'll go and grab a little bit of grass right there. And as soon as we've taken this back and we've tipped it, we've got to start working on our uh, final field as well. So we've still got a little bit more that we want to do. So we want to rush around and get this tipped as quick as we can. I will actually grab a little bit of this. It's not going to hurt to just try and grab some of this and clean it a bit as we go through because it does bug me. It does bug me that it's there. And I don't really like leaving these bits behind. There's a few more bits over here. Around like that. And then there's a bit there on the edge of the road that I want to get rid of. There. And I can come up to there like that and tip. And while that's tipping out, I want to go up here and check how we're doing. This is the final run. This is the final pass down across this field. And then it's going to start working on the outside rounds. And this is the bit that I'm quite interested in seeing. Like that, we've got nice straight runs. It's definitely going to be fairly easy for the baler to cope with. Not going to be any... Um, serious problems with any of that. Can I change it so that the baler does the outside rounds first after I've generated the course and said do the inside rounds first? Is that something that I can change? I think that I can do it if I just tell the baler to go and do the um, bits first. So Let's just see where this one goes to to start doing the outside rounds because he's got one bit here to do. He's got one single pass there, which is actually over quite a bit into the previous run, which is a little bit odd. It would come over quite so tight. But who am I to argue? That's now finished on there. So now where's it going to go? He's done that bit. 
And he's now going to start going round, although it doesn't really matter if it makes a bit of a mess here, because when it comes round on the final time, it does tidy it all up. So if I bring it out to here, this direction with the baler, is it going to do the... It does the inside one of the two first. He's turned right back on himself, and he's starting at this point here. There, and it's lowered down right there in... No, it hasn't lowered down. That's not where he's lowered down. He's, he's, brought, he's, he's still up in the air. He's brought it to that point right there. That's where he started. So I'm going to do that with my baler. I'm going to bring my baler over to here. There he goes. And he's away. So he goes quite a ways into the field there. And it's gathering everything up. Yes, yeah, a little bit of uh, a rough and bouncy ride. But if I do it there and then have the baler go round from that point, I should be able to just sort of choose the point on the course where I start and I shouldn't have any problems. So I can do that and I'll also manually go round the island in the middle. Then we can go and gather up all of those bales and then the baler we can just leave on course play going up and down doing the straight bits on the rows. And that shouldn't have any issues, especially considering how well it seems to be picking everything up on here. It seems to be doing a rather good job of it as well. Okay. Well, I'm quite pleased with that. I, You can stay there and carry on doing what you're doing. What I want to do next is I want to go to uh, you. And I want to get you out to the next field. So we're going to go straight across this way now. We're going to cut across this field here. And no, I'm not going to worry about picking up these bits as much as I'd like to. It's just going to take too much time. So we're going to go over this way. And we've got a course on here that we've saved. That's ready that we can... It was unnamed Mo or something along those lines, wasn't it? And I bring you out there like that. And I go like this. And I go to here. And I go unnamed Mo. And I load that course right there. And... Next closest, nearest, first, to begin with. You know what? I can actually just do next closest. Drive course. That's going to keep going on there. So we'll leave it on next closest. That's going to work its way around that bit. Now, we're not going to have anywhere near the yield on here that we have on our plowed land, but we're still going to get a reasonable yield. So you keep doing that bit, and we're getting down to the very interesting bits of the fields down here. So there's a bit of a mess over there that's been left behind that I can't really do a lot about. And so there is a few bits on this, but I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that we were skipping every other row. Skipping every other row was a mistake, and I won't do that next time. Next time we'll... Um, we won't do any skipping because I think this one's wide enough that the baler doesn't need to worry about it. And then round you go. What's it going to be like when it comes back through and does the next pass? And also, what's this one going to be like over here? Is the rake going to actually be able to do all of the bits? That, when it will be on this bit here, it's down near the road that the problem is. So there's a little bit of a dip down there, isn't there? That's where the main issue lies. And up on this bit... No issues at all. And it's reaching up far enough that it's keeping it tidy as well. So far, so good. So that's the final round around the outside. It's it's tidied that up really well. I'm very pleased with how it's tidied that up. I don't think we could have done a better job ourselves if we'd done that manually. It's dancing around a bit as it goes through, but it's still doing all right. And I got one more pass. So let that one do that. And... I'm going to take this one down to the dealership a minute because we've got another job that we still need to do. We need to go and bring the header back from the dealership. So I'm going to drive down there with this one and I'm going to get that. And we're going to bring it back. And actually, I don't know where I'm going to leave it. I was thinking I'd leave it in the yard, but now I'm thinking maybe we should just leave it over here somewhere. We'll, pro we'll leave it near the field, so we'll just we'll, we'll use the truck here and we'll get it over near the field so it's somewhere there ready for when we want to start harvesting the corn, which I believe should be tomorrow. 
Alright, once again, I'm going to say that I'm going straight into a new session of recording because I want to try and load up the stuff that we've done in here previously and see if we can carry on. And also, I want to try something different with that one, so I'll see if that also works. So this one right here, we've got the course loaded and the tractor should be in the right point so if i say drive course start course at nearest waypoint i'm hoping it will just finish off the course by doing the outside round of the field there shouldn't be anything else that it actually needs to do so i'm going to go drive course like that and it started at the next point so it's come around that corner and it's going through absolutely fine without any problems and it's picking up all of those scraps and bits that are left over at the end of the course so hopefully this will just carry on right around the field without any problems so i'm going to leave that one there and that one's going to carry on and then i'm going to go over to actually i'm going to go back through to this one now i did have already this one we've we had a course on here uh has he already got the course loaded i didn't actually think Right, the course is still loaded on here, so I literally just need to go drive course. But there's something else that I'd like to do. So I'm going to clear this because the course is saved, I hope. Should be. Uh, we're going to here, and this is field 6 temp that we've got in here. Should be field 6 temp. If it's not, we're in trouble. Well, yeah, it should be because, uh, I, yeah, I, I swapped over and I did a different um, different one. I've got unnamed Mo. Actually, it's probably that one. Yeah, because I've got that down there. It already says unnamed Mo. That's the one that we've got. So we've got unnamed Mo in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the current course like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new course. And this is something that was suggested to me last week from last week's recordings that I should try because I'm more likely to get this to actually work. You know, I was trying to merge two courses together and I was struggling to get two courses to merge together. I couldn't get them to merge together properly or I couldn't get them to work properly. Now, in theory, I should be able to do it like this. I got to start outside of the field. That's what I was doing wrong. Apparently, I should have started outside of the field and not in the field. So I'm going to start outside the field and I'm going to go, I think I still need to have this on field mode. I don't think I need to have it on grain transport. I think I just leave it on field mode. Although I'm not certain about that, but I'm going to try on field mode and I'm going to start course recording right now. And then I'm going to drive this way. So it starts there. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this field over here. And I'm going to drive straight across this field. Rather than going round the other stuff, I'm just going to go straight across this field here. Because it's a lot easier if we can do it like this. And we come up here like this. And I'm just going to get rid of that so that I can move that round a little bit and see what we're doing. And then I'm going to bring that one over to there. And I'm going to stop there. I'm hoping that that is... There we go. We've, we've got the tip right there. And then we come out of that tip, and I go right round here, round the back. And I bring this back up here like this. And then back across the field. Now, this next bit, I will bring it back over towards where I was working previously. And slow that down there as we come out onto this bit. And I'm going to go up to there. And then I'm going to stop right there. That's where I'm going to stop. So I'm going to go stop the recording right there. There is my course that I've got. So first I want to save that course. And I'm just going to call that one tip. Like that. Save. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the course. Clear that one completely. I'm going to go back up here. And I'm going to reload the course that I had on this field. Because we started going around this field. But we want to carry on from where we were previously on this course. The Challenger has just about finished its round around the outside of the field. So we're just going to go and check that one a minute. 
make sure that, that one is doing everything that we want it to do. I'm hoping that he will come up and he will stop the course right there. And he's not going to go and start doing any more of it. He will just come up to this point and stop the course once it gets to that point right there. Has reached the trigger point and it has stopped. That is absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to bring that one out of there. I'm going to say stop driver. I'm going to clear that course completely. Get rid of that. And we will fold up that rake. Because we're not going to need this rake for anything else for now. Not for quite a while, actually. So we'll get that one folded up and we can move this one back down here. I'll drive this one down to the yard very quickly. We won't start the bailing just yet because I want to just focus on the, um, the tractor picking up the grass. We'll focus on picking up the grass right there. And then once we've done that, once we've picked up the grass, oh, we've got the grass picking up. I'm hoping that this new thing is going to work properly. Um, once we've got that going, then we will come back down here and we're going to have to start looking at the bailing and stuff like that. Uh, you here, I was supposed to get that one hooked on. That's what I was doing at the end of the last episode, wasn't it? So um, that one's hooked up, ready to go. I'm not going to worry about that one either. Okay, I need to should have gone the other way right so we'll bring you up to here now we've got no course loaded right now so i want to go into the courses that we've got we've got unnamed mo which i want to load like that and then apparently i should just add this one load course merge into loaded courses so all i got to do is that um or append course at the end i think i just load course if i don't it'll be that one that we want to do there append course at the end yeah, I've, I think I need to load merge. So then I can go back to here. We'll go in here a minute and we will just do this bit. I will go settings, 10k, reversing speed, 6k. That should be all right. Start course at nearest waypoint. Yes, that's what I want. Drive course. Okay. That's going. It's doing what it's supposed to do. It's going 10k because it's just coming up to a corner right here. And the mowing, it does leave a little bit behind from the mowing um, with the Zerian because the Zerian does kick round. With the steering mode that we have on a Zerian, it does kick round a bit, which is most likely why we're leaving little bits on the corners and stuff like that um but we'll it's, it's not really a, a great terrible thing we might change the steering mode on the zerian for um future courses or just for future mowing we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see but right now what we want to do is we just want to keep an eye on this one watch this one go through until it gets to that's just gonna so he's, he's keeping going on the course that's good that's that's one really good thing. We want this to... It's going to get to 90,000. And if we've done this correctly, because it's got the second course loaded there, it should automatically go over to that second course and do it. So long as I've done this correctly. It's either got to be... I mean, I don't think it's append course on the end. I think we just load and merge the courses. I don't think that's a problem. Is whether recording that one in field mode or recording it in the grain tip mode... Uh, whether we got that right or whether um, I don't think it makes any difference to be honest I don't think it actually makes any real difference to how it performs um, if we're using something like this for doing the grain for doing the combining and then um, automatically running up to it and collecting the grain and then going off out of the field I believe that uh, course play no longer has crop destruction built into it. It used to have crop destruction built into it, but... Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that, if you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.